Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video for you. This time I'm reviewing more of your guys' resumes and projects, and hopefully this will be informative. It'll it'll give you real world examples about, you know, some, some best practices of what people do really well, but also some ways that, you know, maybe you could improve upon your resume or your portfolio. In this video, this person preferred to remain anonymous, which is totally fine. And we're just gonna go through and talk about what they do well on their resume and you know, their portfolio and then a couple specific projects. So without further ado, let's kind of dive into the resume here. So first, I think that this resume is very visually appealing. It looks really good. It seems like the experience is really solid. Depending on the type of position you're applying to, a more styled resume like this could help you or it could hurt you. So if you're if you're applying to, you know, a big, uh, a big more, you know, more established technology company, they're probably not going to be as excited about this as a kind of cutting edge startup. So I actually have two resumes when, when I was applying, I would send out a very vanilla resume that was catered for a lot of the, the systems that they use to, to filter out resumes to the bigger companies and to the smaller ones, I'd send a, a stylized one like this. So that could be something that, you know, if this person isn't getting as many of the interviews that, that they would hope to be, that could be one reason why. The technical skills up top, I absolutely love that. I think that that's the best thing you can do. That's, as a, as a recruiter, as, as someone going through these things, that is the first thing that they look at. Next, I see the projects. I see the education and the professional experience around this side. The single most important thing on your resume is your experience, whether it's professional experience or projects. So I'd probably want that on this resume highlighted just a little bit more. So perhaps moving this professional experience over here to where this project, these projects are and moving the projects down here and then publications and certifications kind of in this blue side. So when I look at this, the first thing that I see is this kind of upper right quadrant. I, I don't read this left to right for some reason, the, the white just sticks out so much more. So you'd want to put your professional experience where, the, where they're going to be looking first, because again, that is the most important thing. This person uses a kind of summary statement and about them. I, I personally don't recommend that. I think that it, it doesn't really do much to help you. I mean, you, here they say that they, uh, they're enthusiastic, they work hard, they have attention to detail, organizational skills. I'd rather have someone show that to me through their project and work experience than, than tell me up front. That just doesn't leave like a great taste in my mouth. Uh, in the US, I, I would definitely probably recommend removing this. In other countries, I can't speak to the, the hiring process there. But, uh, you know, that that is something that that's kind of like a, a, a personal dislike. So if you really like it, you like how it, it um, you know, how it talks about you know how it expresses yourself uh it's okay to leave it in but you know i don't necessarily think that that will help your chances at all um the education looks good i really like the coursework this is really awesome uh, the internship experience being an actual data science intern and a machine learning intern those are the best ways to, to actually break into a data science role so let's look into how they actually describe their experience there. So they say they deployed customer churn prediction models specific to the telecom sector, developed architectural prototypes for video analytics framework based on deep learning. So one thing in these descriptions I realize is there isn't anything necessarily quantitative. Usually I like to use a formula, basically like action verb, so deployed, and then a quantitative evaluation of work. So that could be a you know, deployed five customer churn prediction models, you know, that helped, um, that helped, um, you know, about uh, understand customer segments better. Um, or it would be, you know, developed ar architectural prototypes for video analytics framework um, that trimmed, you know, production time or something by, by 5%. So again, this formula is basically action verb, then quantitative outcome, and then uh, method and result. So, you know, that, that again, to me is the best way to communicate this, you know, as data scientists, you're using, 
basically numbers, you're using analytics to, to this, you know, as a product, and you should be talking about your experiences and your work in the same frame. You should be evaluating them quantitatively. That's what people are going to be looking at from you. The same thing goes with the project here. Projects here, yeah, I, I think that these are, are pretty good. Um, you know, using chest X-ray imaging as a predictive model using TensorFlow and Keras. I would prefer to see outcome first and then what you used. So if, if you were to say, okay, we were 80% accurate with minimal training, and then you said what you used, that would be more interesting to me. I mean, you always want to give in a business setting your results up front. The business stakeholders don't really care as much what you used, but um, you know that is something that, that shows that you have a good business understanding if you can phrase it in that way. So, you know, those are some of the recommendations I would make there. Overall, I think this is a really good resume. Um, and the only adjustments I would make are the, are the ones that, that I talked about. Um, you know, kudos to this person. I, this is, you know, I didn't see any spelling errors. I didn't see anything like that, which, which I have seen uh, in a lot of the ones that I've looked at. So they also sent me over this portfolio. So when you open it, you see this big, beautiful picture. I think the aesthetics are incredible, uh, but you ha really have to scroll down to see the projects here. So what I would recommend doing is making it so when you open it, you actually see the project right away. If I only had a couple, you know, 30 seconds to look at your portfolio, I would open this and say, where are the projects? I might click out of it. So just, you know, you wanna be front and center. I love the aesthetics, but you know, maybe make it so they're on the side or, or you know, you really wanna highlight your projects front and center. I think that you know there, there's five projects here. There's a lot of diversity in them, and it's cool that they have the um, how long the reads are. Um, I love the name of this. You know what makes a good movie? Ask Bayes. Let's look at this project. So that's the one, the first one that caught my eye. So we start with the setup, how to load the packages. Um, you know this is generally pretty good. I always talk about how to how you should have a summary at, at the top. So again, if I'm a recruiter, I can go in and see basically everything about the project in, in you know, 30 seconds that I read, because you know, in, unless you make it to a, a second, third round of the interview, no one's gonna go through your whole portfolio. So you wanna make it as user-friendly to recruiters as possible. Let's well, laptop brand classifier, this sounds pretty cool. Uh, again, we wanna, make sure when it opens, we're going right to the, the stuff here. Um, so I like this summary, summary a lot better. Um, you know, you explain why you wanna do this, you put the accuracy right up front. I think that that's generally a, a good practice there. Now let's go to their, like a GitHub repo of theirs. I opened up just one of their projects here. Um, you know, I like that you're using the plain text, I've done a similar project to this before. Um, you know, this, this might be a little bit on the shorter side. I know that this is one of the examples that they use in Fast AI just to do a pretty quick project like this, but maybe a little bit more analysis after the fact or adding a little context or explaining uh, how the sounds are, are made up uh, could, could really help this out. Um, I'd also talk about maybe a potential use case that you could have for this. You know, how do you, how do you, you know, how would you make this into a product? Uh, product? You know, what does that look like? Let's actually go into this and see what the README looks like. So, you know, for these GitHub repos, the thing that I would really focus on, just like how, how these articles were really good, uh, or like the write-ups were really good, I would make sure that the README has some of, not quite the same amount of detail, but a good level of detail, uh, because having a good README shows you shows an employer how good you are at documentation in general. And documentation is so important, especially if other people are using your code. So especially in GitHub, in the repos, the README again is very important, and I would make sure that you you build this out just a little bit more. Overall, I think that this portfolio is is really impressive. It's really solid. Um, with a few adjustments, I think that this person would be a very good candidate uh, for, for a lot of jobs. I will say, you know, I, I, 
I always think more projects is better. And sometimes it's kind of cool to see a little bit of a theme within projects. You know, all of these projects are on very different things. And, you know, for example, you look at, at, at my portfolio, a lot of it's focused on sports. That's showing something that, that I'm very interested in. It, it never hurts to show a little bit of your personality in some of these things. So if, you know, you have a green thumb, you're really into uh, agriculture, it'd be cool to see like two or three projects around agriculture. Or, you know, this person uses a lot of really cool photos, for example. Uh, maybe a, a couple, uh, I guess they do a couple video uh, image analysis, but, you know, a couple, uh, you know, projects around photography or something could also be compelling. It shows uh, the, the viewer or something about, about you. For anyone watching this, I do really recommend, you know, making a portfolio website like this. You can host it for free through GitHub. And maybe I'll make a video about how to do that. I actually haven't built a personal website like that through GitHub and, and that could be a kind of fun activity as well. So I hope that this project was useful to you. I hope that you know the person who submitted this really gets some, some good feedback and, and this can help them to put their best foot forward when either looking for a job or whatever that might be. Thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.